Hi everyone, this is John Akrazoglu, and I thought I'd spend a few minutes here talking about some of the technologies in your technology learning plan, giving you an idea of what they are, and perhaps how you might be able to use them in your project. Um, animated Productions, Adobe Flash, very powerful, very popular um, production tool that lets you create animations and special effects on the internet. Um, for online teaching or otherwise, it can be a very lucrative skill to have be able to do your own Adobe Flash programming. Camtasia is an animated production tool that we have available on campus, and its really strength area is be able to capture what you're doing on screen and add voiceovers and things and animations to it. Very popular and very and recommended if you want to teach people software. You want to be able to show menus and mouse clicks and things like that. Narrated PowerPoint slideshow. Well, that's what I'm using right now. I've got PowerPoint running, I'm talking to it, I'll be um, converting it to an MP4 file and uploading things to YouTube and that's how I'm delivering this presentation to you right now. App development, creating your own apps, again, maybe a lucrative skill to have in and outside of online teaching, Adobe Captivate and Life Tool, Life Code, they are both e pretty easy to use. They've got a graphical environment that lets you program your own apps for maybe a specific need that you might have in your teaching or otherwise. Collaboration tools. You know, bringing students together as groups. Um, there's some biggies out there in higher education and business. Adobe Connect is something that we use here on campus. I don't know if you've ever had any um, classes where students are brought together. It allows to survey and poll them and be able to create breakout groups among students. Same thing with Blackboard Collaborate, huge player in higher education and business. Confluence Wiki, it's licensed by the University of Iowa so students can use it. Powerful wiki generator, lets you create wikis, you know, online bulletin board, discussion boards that students can contribute, teachers can add, or maybe even outsiders that you want to be able to participate in the learning environment. Google Drive and Google Apps, very powerful. Um, collaborative tools used in K-12 and in higher education. It seems like when students are assigned to collaborate on projects, they go right to Google Drive and share word processors, slideshows, and spreadsheets and things like that. Wikispace is free, accessible, um, public domain um, wiki generator that you might want to use again for creating wikis or online discussion groups. Course management systems, CMS systems. The big one out there is Blackboard. Course management systems are, are environments that you can create online. You're using one in Icon that lets you create a, a, a classroom situation environment with grade books and be able to distribute handouts and things like that. Blackboard is huge in education and in business, but one that's up and coming and a lot of the Big Ten schools are looking at it is Canvas by Instructor. You might want to look at that if you're thinking ahead in higher education. Desire to learn is what Icon is. It's the backbone, background in, um, engine to Icon. We've branded Icon, Iowa Courses Online. Moodle, huge in K-12. It's free, open source. Sometimes it's hard to get good support. There's a lot of communities supporting it. You just gotta tap into the right place. Um, very popular in K-12. And also we're seeing a lot of it used in, in higher ed. It's free, again, open source. And I got a link to it. Um, that Moodle's put together where you can create your own site for free just to test it out and learn it. Success Factors is huge in business. It's the ones that business use and professional organizations use to create online training and courses for business applications. And WebCT is one of the very first um, course management systems that we used here at the very beginning um, when we were using this stuff at the University of Iowa. Some very deep pockets of WebCT, WebCT in the, around the country and around the world. Video production tools. Um, Adobe Premiere Elements, it's a simplified, simplified version of Adobe Premiere. It is used a lot in the professional world and it's licensed for University of Iowa students. You already own it. Um, on the syllabus, I do give you places you might want to look for a lot of this software that's, that you might already have access to or license to use or be available in ITCs or on virtual desktop, or whatever. Take a look at the syllabus and see if you might already have access or might also sort of own this stuff by virtue of being a University of Iowa student. Audacity is a um, 
audio editing tool that you can use to, to work on voices, to work on um, music, cutting and splicing things together, made for podcasts or audio presentations. Google Hangouts, um, it's a way that Google can get together with video um, conferencing, but also you can edit it. And so your students who are together can um, record and save and edit, do minor edits to their presentations. Final Cut Pro is probably the professional um, video production tool out there by Apple. I believe it's only so far available on Apple Macintoshes, but you see it used in a lot of very high-end professional productions. iMovie is Apple's consumer-grade video ed editor, open, they're all available all over the place out there. Panopto, um, also known on UI campus as Lecture Capture, UI Lecture Capture. If you ever take in the, uh, a class and the lecture is delivered online where you can see the professor, um, hear the professor teaching and see the PowerPoints and things like that, they're probably using Panopto or UI Capture. It's a way to deliver lectures and slideshows at the same time over the internet. Windows Movie Maker, a very capable video editor. I think it's free from Microsoft still. It used to come free with all Windows computers, but now I think you got to download it from Microsoft. It's free. And then there's YouTube. We seem to be using more of that. Um, I've pre been presenting to K-12 schools on how to use YouTube, but still keep things private and secure. It seems to solve a lot of our problems, not just by uh, not just by captioning or capturing and editing and captioning video, but also provides a vehicle towards distributing your video, a place to save it, and also be able to link to it. Um, survey testing. If you ever need to throw out a survey or a test or a quiz your students, Qualtrics is licensed to University of Iowa students. Um, I believe you can sign up and download it and use it online. Or SurveyMonkey is pretty good. Qualtrics does offer some pretty sophisticated analysis tools to see what kinds of responses you have and how you can analyze the results of all those responses. Presentations, creating interactive storybooks and things like that, iBook, PowerPoint slideshows, and then there's Prezi. Um, Prezi does add a unique flair, flavor to the slideshows or stories you might want to tell through slides on the internet. Used more and more in business, and it seems again to have an exciting flair to it. Maybe worth a look at instead of using PowerPoint next time. Authoring systems, authoring means like programming in a more friendly environment. Um, Articulate Storyline 2, iTunes U, Lectora, lets you create interactive programmed environments that students can interact and get feedback and things like that. Social media networking. More and more educators are opening their, their the idea, are open to the idea of maybe using social networking programs like Facebook to um, sort of bring classes together, to, to, to give information, to organize events and things like that. Second Life is interesting. It creates a simulated environment. Students can engage each other in different kinds of role playing. Twitter is, um, as a lot of you know, is probably the number one messaging system. You can share ideas. You can bring in ideas. You can um, communicate with your students or have them um, communicate or receive information from important people and things like that. Weibo, it's the number one social network in Asia. And if you're looking at an international feel of using these social networking tools, you might want to look at Weibo. MOOCs, massive online open courses, are a huge deal in higher education, offering a lot of courses for free for various reasons, and a way to harness those, to organize those, and create learning communities. There's um, edX, Coursera, and Audacity that you might want to look at if you're going to higher ed. It certainly is something you might want to consider looking into. Graphics and page layout, you know, doing illustrations and working with pictures. Acrobat Pro, we make a lot of PDFs with that, use a lot where if you want to um, distribute um, formatted documents and they're sort of self-contained. You don't need another um, big program to open them. A lot of times the browsers already come able to open up uh, Acrobat Pro or Acrobat PDF files. Fireworks, Illustrator, Photoshop Elements, um, those are ones again that help you do graphics things to pictures and illustrations and photos and that. And in any of this, 
If you have products that you want to learn, if there are things that you want to do that aren't exactly spelled out the way you'd like them to in the course or in the syllabus, just let, let me know. Let's work this out. I, the most important thing to me is to make this class meaningful to you in your future career in online teaching. So if there are products here or if you want to be creative with the way you perform a project or complete a project, just let us know. Let me know and we can maybe work something out. Video conferencing. You know, putting together people with webcams and things like that. Adobe Connect is a big one. Um, Adobe Connect puts together video conferencing and it's also sort of spills over in other, other um, um, of these categories. Um, but it is one that we use a lot here on campus. Um, Apple FaceTime, Blackboard Collaborate, big in business. Um, um, FaceTime seems to be more consumer grade while Blackboard Collaborate you know, is very popular in business. Link is one put out by Microsoft that a lot of businesses use to, to conduct one-to-one -one training or messaging within the organization. The University of Iowa is also sort of really looking hard at that to do a lot of support, a lot of training, a lot of communication amongst a lot of us within the institution. Skype, as you probably know, is probably one of the biggest video conferencing system. It does have some limitations when it comes to online learning, number of people that can participate at one time. Um, sometimes the bandwidth is not handled well, and sometimes support might not be where it should be. But again, very popular, pretty darn easy to use. Um, and I've seen a lot of one-on-one um, -on -one consultations, support done with Skype. But the one that we are sort of migrating towards, and a lot of us are using more and more, is one called Zoom. Seems to be easy to use. You can have over 20 students at one time. Performs fairly well in some very um, challenging bandwidth conditions. Um, and support seems to be responsive. They actually answer your emails or questions. And to me, one of the neatest features to it is recording the sessions with your students, whomever, the meetings can be recorded and are easy to find or save on your computer. We're going to have to try to fish them off a server or have to ask a server operator to deliver the recording to you. And that's good for if students miss a class or you want to record something, uh, a session that you want students to later on reflect on or maybe bring it up in another semester, maybe some highlights of things that were said or done in a, in a video conferencing using Zoom. And finally, I don't know, um, Designing your own learning environments, engineering your own um, learning spaces, and um, creating your own um, teaching technology rooms, whatever you want to call it. If some of you are in online teaching, sometimes that's up to you. Um, what we have done, oh, we have, we've consulted a number of people. One of the number one online courses is taught by a counseling um, department in Tennessee, University of Tennessee, and they, what they do, they have a room the faculty go to with a computer and a microphone. They do narrated PowerPoints, like we're doing here, delivering to students. Students use discussion boards and communicate with, uh, with the um, faculty member using um, um, Blackboard Collaborate for chatting each other and stuff like that. But all they have there is just a camera, webcam on a computer and PowerPoint and pretty much an internet access and they got all the tools they need. Um, one thing that we have done here at the University of Iowa is create an extremely high-tech classroom, N105, Linkless Center. We, we branded it iTech, Iowa Technology Enhanced Classroom, and it's got cameras built into the walls. It's got speakers and microphones all over the place. It's a hybrid system in that students are in the classroom, but also you can engage remote students outside the classroom. So you have on-campus and off-campus people working together, or you can have your on-campus students interacting with experts out in the field or other communities that you want them to interact with to, to enhance their learning, or maybe all the students, remote and local students, can interact with people or other places right there at the same time. If you ever are in charge of designing your own learning space or want to look at a lot of the engineering things that go behind it, I'd be happy to, to give you a tour and demonstration of iTech. It's very popular. We think it's one of the most sophisticated online teaching rooms in the country. We have institutions and, and businesses from all over the country coming and visiting and wanting us to demo and, and consulting with us on it. Well, I hope this was useful. 
Um, again, this is using po narrated PowerPoint and delivering it to YouTube. And the captioning that you, have, you will see on this is done all on YouTube. And if you have any questions on all this, or if you want to think out of the box and try some other things, certainly let's talk. Take care. Have a good semester. John Akrazoglu.